beautiful Missouri Ozarks. It is the Gilbert House Fellowship Bible Study for Sunday, May 21st, 2023. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we are in your ears once again, and uh, I pray that we get some things right today, and well, if we <laughs> don't get them all right... That's that on means us. we're human. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, we could call this Psalm Sunday. We can. You know? <laughs> I like that. Yes. No, it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. And if you're listening to this on the app, thank you for downloading it. If you're not, then please Why get the not? app. Why not? Yes. I, I know that there is a, we've got a, a, a faithful group that listens on YouTube and follows us on mm-hmm. YouTube. And I, I but, love that. But And we appreciate that. We thank you for subscribing. Uh, but uh, you will have noticed that uh, today we suddenly uploaded like four new programs all at once. And that's because we, I said, this is on me, I what? said something three years ago. Or I didn't say something. I think I guessed it. It was but one it, of your guests. But it was someone that, uh, for whatever reason, yeah. the algorithms just flagged it and... It was the same topic that gets got Scott even, TV. Don't even say yeah. it. We'll just so, say that much. But the fact yeah, is, that's it. YouTube's playground, we understand that. Right. Yeah, you can rules. complain. No, it's not fair, but it yeah. is a fact. Yeah. And However, a, on the app, on we're the always going to be there. Exactly right. And, and the app now has a new feature, which was rolled out some months ago. We just started playing with it over the weekend, and um, it allows for... Uh, sort of a community yeah. it's it's sort of like social media except it bypasses the gatekeepers right you it can set up right an account there you right. can chat with other people in the fellowship uh we're going to start setting up threads if you want to call them that mm-hmm. that are specifically for prayer requests things like that um so you can get to know one another you know essentially fellowship with one another hey an actual fellowship exactly so when you look at the app on your mobile device, look in the top right corner, you'll see a little icon that looks like two little talk balloons. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you click on that, that'll take you to the area where the groups are located. And among the groups, you will see, we, we've just, as we're still experimenting with this, we've just set one up for the Gilbert House Fellowship, one for Review from the Bunker, one for Unraveling Revelation, um, one other one for PID Radio. And those and, are specifically if you want to comment on the programs or ask a question right. or whatever. But the fellowship, the Gilbert House Fellowship, think of that as your virtual uh, small groups from a church. I think that's a good way of looking at it. So if you want to comment on individual programs or if you've got a prayer request, um, there, there, you'll have to ex- experiment around a little bit with the uh, with the format, but it should be fairly familiar interface similar to Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, except that, uh, again, you've got specific type of comments for prayer requests. And no ads. And no ads. That's the other thing. Yes, no ads. So uh, do check that out. we got a couple people in there, in there who've been trying it out uh, the last couple days, and we thank you for that. But um, powerful feature that the developer of the app has built into it. And again, because they're a Christian company, they are not going to censor our content. And all the content that goes to the app goes to Roku and Apple TV, also comes from the same source. So um, if you've got the mobile app and you want to put stuff on the big screen, you can usually cast it with Google Chromecast or Apple AirPlay, or you can just get the the Roku or Apple Mm -hmm. TV app and put stuff up there. So do take advantage of the app, gilberthouse.org slash app. Yeah, um, thank you to those who have uh, 12,000 plus who have downloaded the app already. I'm stunned. That's that's mm. huge. So we pray that uh, many of you who have downloaded it will become active in that uh, those groups. This is an interesting weekend. Um, we've had the Bilderbergs. We've mm-hmm. had the G7 meeting. Right. The uh, Council of Europe has been meeting. Mm-hmm. The Arab League. The Arab League has been meeting. And the Satanists. Oh. The Church of Satan, or whatever they call themselves, Temple of Satan. Satanic uh, Temple. Satanic Temple, mm-hmm. yes. They are meeting in Boston. I think that was a few weeks ago. Well, I saw an article about it this morning. I that think was, they're just getting media attention well, now. That very well could be, but I think they've had several meetings mm, okay. of late. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, the big reason it's getting attention is because the article is almost a love letter. Well, they're not as evil as you think, essentially. Yeah, I've noticed that. Oh, they don't really worship Satan. They're no, just free thinkers who think religion should be separate from, you right. from the fetters of religion but and hold on church yeah. of satan that, that that's that satanic table that's a religion mm-hmm. oh well nah it's really just a freedom thing 
essentially what they're saying without saying it is it's do as thou wilt. Right. And they're using religious freedom laws in the United States. This, this is in, in the same way, well, they've identified a weakness in the legal system. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to exploit it to make political changes. Yeah. But even though they claim... And, uh, the, the Satanic Temple. Satanic Temple claims. Um, this is the co-founder, Lucian Greaves, whose real name is Doug Mesmer, claims that he's really an atheist, but he uses religious freedom laws to basically try to advance a political agenda. Like mm-hmm. here in the state of Missouri, they objected to state law uh, restricting access to abortion uh, on, on the grounds that for them terminating an unborn child is a sacrament yes i know and so religious freedom they should be exempt and they should still be allowed to abort children yes you're saying sacrifice is a sacrament Mm -hmm. in your church right you're calling yourselves a church and yet you're atheists do you Mm -hmm. understand what that word means yeah here's the irony because atheism is a religion oh sure it is they'll say no no i don't believe in anything yeah you do Mm mm-hmm by saying you don't believe in anything, you're declaring what you believe, mm-hmm. which is that there is no higher authority than, than you. you. Yeah. So, yeah, it is um, interesting. That the, thankfully, there's there's pushback. The uh, The judge that ruled on that case in, here in Missouri tossed it out, said no. For sorry. now. Yeah. Well, and they will probably continue to fight. Oh, yeah. And that, they'll do this that, in a number of states. That bar keeps getting These are the same changed. people who want to bring the uh, statue of Baphomet with two adoring children at his knees mm-hmm. to now, various state capitals. Th- this understandably makes believers upset. It, uh, it angers us. Mm-hmm. And we see in the Psalms that there are times for righteous anger. There are also times to really pray for someone. One of the things that I love so much about uh, Carl Teichrib and his ministry to those who go into the desert to, uh, one might say, worship mm-hmm. during the uh, Burning Man festivals, and he also goes to many other transformational festivals. He goes there to witness. He doesn't go there to petition. He doesn't go there to uh, put up a big sign and say, you're all doomed. Mm-hmm. He goes there to ask them questions. Hey, get, tell, tell, me about what, tell me what you believe. Now, why do you believe that? Mm-hmm. Now, let me tell you what I believe and why I believe it. Mm-hmm. And let's actually have a conversation. Engaging in conversations, mm-hmm. right. But I mean, also going to hear what uh, it is that they are teaching and the message that they're bringing so that he can report back to us. Because the same most of thing us, we've been doing for years. Right. Most of us don't hang out in those circles. Mm-hmm. And, um, you I need think agents most of us on the ground. Are, yeah. I think most of us are, are really surprised when we find how far secularism, but also the, the cult of woke, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. Has, and uh, and ap- has we spread. apologize. We know that many of you out there, your history with that term is far different than the way it's yeah. been. It's it has been compromised and co-opted. That's a really good. So point. it is now it now means something different yeah. than what it once did. I, I had somebody reach out to me because I was using that term a little too freely mm-hmm. on uh, uh, the daily news analyses for Skywatch TV mm-hmm. and pointed out that there's a history with that term in the African-American community. Yep, we that get meant that. something different. But and, and sadly, so appreciate that. But it, it has, has been, co-opted. been changed. Yeah, like like other words in our language that have been co-opted and now well, mean something rainbow different. rainbow means something different than it used yeah. to. pride. Yes, just means, means something, something different. different. So, well, we will say that goeth before a fall, but well, yes, hey, that's there a different is that thing. Too. And so, which I, but, is an interesting reason that they chose that term. Yeah, well, yes, mm. they, they weaponize language they, and, and use it against us. Oh, and sadly, yeah. they've done that with that word woke. Mm. But uh, it is it is a religion. Mm. It is a religion. It is. Um, the way it is now, it truly is a religion. Uh, the fact is that everyone has a belief system. A worldview. Yes. yes. Whether you know it or not, you have a belief system. Um, no, uh, a three-month-old child probably doesn't have a definable belief system other than, I believe I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. But according to some, that three-month-old child can decide he wants to change gender. Mm-hmm. So, no, yeah. That's, 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 I know. Don't get me started yeah. on that. Religion is not a system of rites and rituals. And right, R-I-T-E, not R-I-G-H-T. Rituals that are 
you know, hymns and, and, and songs and, and things that you do. Religion, That's all part of it. It, 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 it. it can be part of it. But it's not the heart but it's of not, it. But it's not the heart of it. It is, it is what you believe and who you serve. And you're either serving an entity or entities somewhere, or you are serving yourself in the mistaken belief that you are the highest form of life in this universe. Mm-hmm. And that is what um, the so-called... Satanist of the Satanic Temple believe. But you're right. There's been a lot of press coverage since their conference in Boston a few weeks ago. Uh, Ironically, there was a group of um, neo-Nazis who went to protest. And it's like, okay, um, (laughs) there's no good guy in that that, uh, confrontation. But they, the, the, the Satanic Temple has gotten a lot of very positive press. They're, oh, they're not what you think. They're not killing. I know. You know, sacrificing. Yeah. And they're they're, yeah. they're just free thinkers who want to free you from the chains of organized yeah. well, religion. Well, I'll remind you yeah. again. These are people that really need prayer need because prayer. there is that judgment has been declared, and it's we're we're going to see in these psalms. Yeah. That that it's coming. Yeah, and when they are facing their judge, I was misinformed will not be an effective defense. No, sadly it will not. Yeah. Well, let's uh, open with a word of prayer for for wisdom. Father, we we pray when we see these things around us, whether face-to-face or in the news headlines, we pray that your spirit will guide us to rightly understand, divide, process this information because we know that they, that we, as much as they, need you that without you father we are lost we are behind enemy lines and the enemy has divided us and is conquering as we see in the world around us we pray father for the spirit to do as paul did on mars hill when surrounded by pagans and pagan idols representing the gods of the people he was engaging in conversation that we could do likewise. Saying, I, we, we see that everyone around us has a hunger for something greater, for something unseen. But we have been so deceived, turned around, confused, dizzy by the onslaught of, of information, news, distractions. Father, we pray that your spirit will help us to hear your quiet voice amidst the noise and to follow your lead to follow your voice where you would have us go help us father to share the hope that we have in christ with gentleness and respect that they may see in us something that they recognize as missing in their own lives as lacking knowing father that it is not any good thing in us that will help them but only your spirit Father, we pray for wisdom as we study your words today from the life of David and see what lessons we might might learn. Help us to understand the world as David saw it, the supernatural realm and this cosmic conflict taking place all around us, knowing, Father, that uh, you have already won the war. We pray for your wisdom to guide us to fill us this day as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's the thing. It's really easy to get angry, and uh, that just serves the enemy's purpose. Righteous anger, you're right. There is a time for it, but um, the media intentionally works to get us inflamed and uh, divided into little warring tribes. So a number of psalms today as we continue through the Bible in chronological order. I know. Um, I love this. The, 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 there's a common theme to today's psalms. Yeah. And uh, as we go through these in order, um, going back to last week, we remember David just had had defeated foes east of the Jordan River, east and north, both in Ammon and then his, uh, the Ammonites' um, Aramean or Syrian allies. Um. And interesting, the uh, the ally that David made out of all that toy or tau t o u t o i, depending on which book you're reading, Second Samuel or First Chronicles, who probably ruled a kingdom called Palestine or mm. Wallistan, depending on how it's transliterated. And yes, Philistine, mm. but in so- what is now southern Turkey near uh, the site of uh, Antioch. So 
This follows all of that. Psalm 60. To the choir master, according to Shushan Eduth, which according to the Net Bible Translators means, Lily of the Testimony, which uh, refers to a particular musical style or um, perhaps the name of a tune. So this could be the title of the melody that was supposed Mm -hmm. to be played. A miktam of David, another musical or liturgical term, for instruction when he strove with Aram Naharayim, that means Aram of the two rivers, so probably further north where the Euphrates and the um, Balik River are coming together, or perhaps even further north and east where the Euphrates and the Tigris are near to one another. And Aram Zobah, the kingdom of Zobah, which is... um, north of Damascus, but south of what uh, today's border with Turkey would be. And when Yoav, on his return, struck down 12,000 of Edom in the Valley of Salt. Okay, you want to stop for a second, because all of that that you just read, which was sort of an introduction to the first actual line of the psalm, Mm -hmm. is different in the Septuagint. Mm. Here it says, for the end, get this part, Mm -hmm. for them that shall yet be changed oh hmm don't you love that changed don't know what the original wording was there huh we don't have the hebrew manuscript all we have is the greek yeah and in the greek the word means to change or to alter Hmm. for them that shall yet be changed and it goes on for an inscription Hmm. by david for instruction Mm -hmm. when he had burned mesopotamia which means the land between two rivers of Syria, doesn't mm-hmm. say Aram, it says Syria, and Syria Soval, as Shoba. Mm-hmm. And Yoav had returned and smitten in the Valley of Salt 12,000. Hmm. O God, you have rejected us, broken our defenses. You have been angry. O restore us. You and this have... says yet has pitied us. Hmm. You have made the land to quake. You have torn it open. Repair its breaches, for it totters. Now, when you you, you you start at the top in the Septuagint, it says, for the end, for them that shall yet be changed. This sounds, uh, you, as we go through the whole psalm, think future judgment. Mm-hmm. You have made your people see hard things. You have given us wine to drink that made us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you, that they may flee to it from the bow. Selah. That your beloved ones may be delivered, give salvation by your right hand and deliver us. I love that. Yeshua yes. by your right hand, which the right hand, that's another reference to our Lord. Mm-hmm. So this is, he's coming. Um, actually, I'm not sure that's, I don't think, I don't know. That's uh, Hoshia. Oh, that's different. Mm. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Hmm. It may be the same lemma. I bet it is. But it, uh. Hosea as in the name of the prophet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, yes, this uh, in, in the Septuagint, thou hast shaken the earth and troubled it. This is verse 2. Heal its breaches, for it has been shaken. Thou hast shown thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast given a token to them that fear thee, that they might flee from the bow. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same root. But, uh, but, but but the actual manuscript word is, yeah, Hosea. Well, this is what yeah. Yeshua does. Right. He saves. Sa- saves. God has spoken in his holiness or in his sanctuary with exultation. I will divide up Shechem. Uh-huh. Shechem, which is Nablus, modern mm-hmm. Nablus. And uh, there have been a lot of skirmishes there lately, a lot of trouble. And it's uh, got a long history of being supernaturally important. Very That's much where so. God first appeared to Abraham when he entered the land of Canaan and said, yeah. this land will all be yours. Here's the interesting thing. Go back to verse four. Okay. You have, set up, you have set up a banner for those who fear you. The numbers are different in the Septuagint. Uh, no. Verse four, thou hast given a token to them that fear thee that they might flee from the bow. Um. The chapter numbers are different, but the verse numbers are pretty much the same unless there's the additional Lexham, stuff. Lexham Septuagint, that's verse 6. No, you read something very similar to it in verse... Well, anyway. Before, yeah, the, the, the numbers in the Brenton Septuagint are different than the numbers in the Lexham oh, Septuagint. Oh, okay. I've got you. But my point is flee from the bow. Right. The rider on the first horse. 
mm-hmm. has a bow. Mm-hmm. This is the God of Shechem. That's true. Yes. Oh, good, good, good point. Yes. We know from ancient texts in northern Syria, which was the kingdom of Ebla, mm-hmm. a thousand years before the Exodus, the uh, city of Shechem was sacred to the god Reshef, mm-hmm. Apollo, who was a, an archer. However, the Masoretic text, well, to flee from the face of the bow, yeah, the Masoretic text is slightly different, that it may be displayed because of truth is hmm. an alternate translation. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, the Net Bible renders it uh, that they may seek safety from the bow. Well, but, the fact uh, the that the bow is in the Septuagint, I would say, the oldest, because this is older. Right. Yeah. yeah, but th- yeah, the Net Bible translators basically... Uh, Long explanation there. The bottom line is not an easy verse to translate. Mm. So back down to I will rejoice and divide Shechem is what it says in uh, Uh, verse uh, six. six God has spoken in his holiness with exultation. I will divide up Shechem and portion out the veil of Sukkoth. Um, The other way of understanding this would be David uh, Shechem. That was an important city on the west side of the Jordan. Sukkoth is on the east side of the Jordan, probably right where the Yabak, uh, which is the River Zarka today, Z-A-R-Q-A, mm-hmm. runs from Amman, Jordan, down into the River Jordan. Right. Um, probably, according to scholars, is the location of that um, ancient site, Deir Allah, where the, uh, the Balaam inscription was found. Oh, that's entirely possible because this says measure out the Valley of Tents. The Valley of Sukkot, mm-hmm. and he, when he saw all of those tents, he started to prophesy over the Isra- uh, the Hebrews. Well, that probably happened down. That happened down at the south end of the Jordan. Well, uh, my point uh, is, Zarkas. Valley of Tents, Valley of Sukkot. True, true. Um, but there's a reason why it's called that. The question is why. Yes, yes. Um, that that site was probably a sacred site that might have been near we, we talked about this with the dear allah inscription we talked about this back when we discussed numbers chapter 24 mm-hmm. that uh, balaam the, the prophet for prophet was remembered in this other inscription the dear allah inscription probably dates to 800 bc somewhere 600 bc somewhere yeah, there, they were if talking I remember about right. what a great guy so was. It, it was hundreds of years later yeah and um it was it's kind of a weird inscription it's uh I'd have to go back and check our notes on all of this, but it, it makes reference to the creator God of the Canaanites, El and Astarte and the underworld and Malachim, mm-hmm. which were not messenger angels in the Canaanite worldview. They were underworld entities related to the Rephaim. Right. But yeah. Kind of a, kind of a weird uh, apocalyptic prophecy. But um, the point is that Shechem and this other site were, more or less on opposite sides of the Jordan Mm -hmm. with a major ford in between them, which is where Jacob crossed over into the land. Right. And if you keep reading, I think it becomes more obvious. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Mm -hmm. In other words, David's saying that region east of the Jordan River belongs to Israel. And also on both. Half tribe was on either side. Right, right. Um, Ephraim is my helmet. Ephraim being the most powerful of the Israelite tribes west of the Jordan River and mm-hmm. north, one of the two most powerful. The right. other being Judah, which he mentions next. Judah is my scepter. So essentially he's pointing out, okay, these areas north and east of the Jordan and the Sea of Galilee, Gilead, Manasseh, that's ours. Ephraim, the region west mm-hmm. and north of Jerusalem. Judah, the region west of the Jordan and south of like Jerusalem, belongs to us. Moab is my wash basin. <laughs> it's where we wash our hands and feet. This one actually says cauldron of hope. Uh, okay. So yes, a, a big container of some kind, but it's filled with hope. Yeah, that's interesting. A little different than wash basin. That may have mm. been tweaked a little bit by the Masoretes. Mm. Um, upon Edom, I cast my shoe. Well, this says stretch out my shoe, and sounds instead of throwing a shoe at it, it sounds more like this is a description of all the land he controls, mm-hmm. and he's taking as yeah. his. Over Philistia, I shout in triumph. Mm-hmm. Phil- the Philistines have been subjected to me, it says. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? 
You do not go forth, O God, with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. Mm -hmm. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. I do so, so love that because it begins, and a lot of these psalms are this way, begins with, these are the awful things happening. Mm Mm-hmm. And then there's triumph at the end. It's like it begins in a minor key and ends in a major. Mm -hmm. And it may have actually done that. I don't know. Uh, Now we're going to which one? Psalm 75. Change. And then we'll skip back. and. I know. (laughs) To the choir master, according to do not destroy. A Septuagint, do not utterly destroy. Well, uh, that must have been the name of a tune, Mm. a song, it says. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. Mm -hmm. We recount your wondrous deeds. And this is something that we see over and over again in the Psalms, but also uh, we see it over and over again in um, other cultures. Mm -hmm. They're poems and their plays and their their recitations regarding this god or that goddess um it's there's a lot of repetition because people didn't read right so they needed to hear these things again Mnemonic and again to, to, memor- to yeah. memorize them and and it, as we've said before when you hear something about the name of god it's not his reputation it no. is an aspect of god incarnate exactly the net bible r- r- renders it you reveal your presence oh yeah for your name is near i love that mm-hmm Uh, Verse 2, at the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. Now, this is not the modern day version. Yeah, that's another word that's been weaponized. It has. He will judge according to what we deserve. Justice. Yes, with justice. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. So as we approach the end times and we worry about wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places and volcanoes going off and and all of these terrible things, Mm -hmm. we can remember that he is keeping steady the pillars. Right. This is, he's, he's holding, it's... He's got the whole world in in his his hands. hands. He truly, truly does. So this is our, our, uh, our hope. We've got salvation. Mm -hmm. And we can watch these things and know that uh, he is coming. Mm -hmm. It's like his footsteps are are coming closer and it's causing the earth to shake. And we should point out, beginning at verse 2 there, this is God speaking. Yes, exactly. Yeah, not David. Well, that is so true. And in fact, a number of these Psalms, it sort of goes back and forth. And and as we go on, I think it'll become more clear. I say to the boastful, verse 4, I say to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high or speak with haughty neck. In other words, you're not all that in the bag of chips. Mm -hmm. No matter how strong you think you are, no matter how much you think you run the world, be you human or inhuman, I still hold those pillars. Everything that happens is in my hand. Remember that. For not from the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness comes lifting up, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For the hand of Yahweh, for in the hand of Yahweh, there is a cup with foaming wine well mixed and he pours out from it and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs this evokes the idea of the cup of trembling Mm -hmm. which is jerusalem and also that wonderful cup that ever overflows eternally in psalm 23 that's the opposite from this Mm -hmm. we can either drink eternally from that cup of salvation right Or you drink from this one. And this cup leaves you staggering, defenseless. Defenseless. And you're going to drink it until every last dreg Mm -hmm. 
That's the sediment at the bottom until all of that is gone. Verse 9, but I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns, the power, Mm -hmm. of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. You can think of horns. It's this, it, there's an old idea in the imagery in uh, the the ancient, ancient cultures, going back to Mesopotamia and Sumer and even into uh, some of the more modern uh, Hebrew times when they took over the land of Canaan. You will see gods represented with, looks like cattle horns wrapped yes. around their mm-hmm. hat. Um, Kronos, mm-hmm. well known for having horns, but... The word, the the Mm K-R-N, that also can mean crown. Yes, yes. So you can either have horns of the wicked, or you can have the power or the crown or the authority of the righteousness, of the righteous. That is the big difference. We get the eternal cup in Psalm 23, salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, or there's this cup of foaming wine down to the dregs, and every bit of power you have will be stripped off you as you drink this. Mm-hmm. That's the choice that we have in this world. Yeah. This is a, a symbol that's used several times in the Old Testament. When we get uh, into Jeremiah, one of the minor prophets, Habakkuk, we'll see those there. Also in Isaiah, there's a mention there. Historical context. When we get deeper into history, rather say more more recent history during the hellenistic period when the greeks took over they would mix wine with water Mm -hmm. so that people could keep drinking and conversation wouldn't turn stupid right tasted good but you didn't get yeah too early in the uh, in the in the meal but in earlier periods of history and this is from interesting uh study tool that i just discovered i have in my logos bible software <laughs> i love your hair you, derek just scratched his head and he suddenly got all of these little points like a <laughs> like a mountainous mountain range on he top wears of his- a crown <laughs> um yeah it's it's sunday morning here um but in earlier periods of history before the greeks took over so when it was mainly an oriental culture and oriental in the sense of uh, the way it was used in the 19th century to refer to the ancient Near East, ancient Near Eastern cultures, they would mix wine with a more potent intoxicant. Mm, That doesn't surprise me a whole lot. So when you're seeing that those verses here on the foaming wine, Mm -hmm. that's kind of what's in view in the days of David, the wine would be mixed with something else. Mm. Poppies. Well, maybe, but but at the very least, the Lord is saying to you, I have prepared two cups, your choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Either salvation or this cup that leaves you staggering, reeling like a drunkard, to borrow from Isaiah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, um, now we go to 65. Psalm 65. Yeah. It's kind of sad. We do 65 through 67 and then 69. We skip over Psalm 68, the, the, which is one these, of our they, It must be because it's known somehow that yeah. this is the order in which they were written. I have no idea, but yeah, it does seem mm-hmm. odd. Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. By the way, this you, is, oh, oh, sorry. It says for the end. Oh, okay. Again, most of these today in the Septuagint begin with for the end. Now, whether that means the end times, as in how we are now living, mm-hmm. looking forward to the return of Christ, or if it means some place in the service, but the, the, the tone of all of them, the theme of all of them is end times. Right. Interestingly, in the Masoretic text, all of these that say for the end in the Septuagint read to the choir master. Ah, <laughs> now isn't that interesting? Yeah. I want that other part in yeah, there. Yeah, no, we're not going to, yeah. To the choir master, a psalm of David, a song. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. (laughs) This is blessed is he whom thou hast chosen and adopted. Hmm. And I love that imagery because... As opposed to bring near. Yes, exactly. Mm. 
Lexham renders it to the one whom you choose and took. Hmm. Hmm. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Yes, this is getting into storm god language again, but also that same idea that he's holding the whole earth in his hand Mm -hmm. and everything that happens here is allowed by him. Right. He doesn't directly cause all of it, but he allows all of it. Mm -hmm. Free will. Yep. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and... Uh, Can you read verse 8 again? Sure. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. Okay, I'm going to read the Septuagint just to make it a little clearer because it does for me. Our modern version of awe is different. Mm -hmm. The nations shall be troubled and they that inhabit the ends of the earth shall be afraid of thy signs. Right. That will cause the outgoings of morning and evening to rejoice. Um, I think terrorized. Mm-hmm. As we as we uh, approach the return of Christ, I think some of the things going on in the earth are going to be very troubling, but perhaps the morning and evening are rejoicing because he's, he's returning. The earth will be glad when our Lord returns. Mm-hmm. I was looking to see if the morning and evening were related to the uh, the Canaanite. Oh, it might be. But they're not. Oh. Different different words. Okay. Well, it's hard to say. Yeah, there are there are Canaanite deities for dawn and dusk. Uh, yeah. Shalim. Uh, Shalim and Shakar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Halal bin Shakar. Mhm. Mhm. But those are not the words here translated morning and evening in the uh, uh in in Psalm 65. You visit the earth and water it or fill it. Mm-hmm. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. It's it's another picture of a grain god, mm-hmm. a storm god, right. and they're often the same thing. Mm-hmm. Your water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your <laughs> wagon tracks overflow with abundance. This actually says, I like crown the year with your bounty. This actually says, thou wilt bless the crown of the year. Mm, mm-hmm. because of thy goodness. So probably the head of the year, I don't know, the, the harvest time in the fall. Um, yeah, crown the year. Yeah. But but it still gives you a picture of provisioning, mm-hmm. that the Lord is going to make sure that we have right. everything we need. Does he do that today? I think in many cases he does, because if we have something good, it is from him. Let's mm-hmm. just face that. Mm-hmm. But there will come a time when the Lord is reigning in Zion Mm -hmm. that he will provide all of those things. And in fact, there is a, and I don't have the verse address, so to speak, in front of me, but where we get a prophetic picture of those very, the the, the millennial reign, and it talks about the nations shall come once a year and they'll worship him, and those that do not Mm -hmm. will not get rain. Yeah. Yeah. And viewing this from the standpoint of somebody living in a society surrounded by cultures that were polytheistic, Mm -hmm. as you said, this is the Hebrew view of the, of the cosmos. Like, no, you're, you're worshiping all of these different deities, the, the morning God, Mm -hmm. the evening God, the, um, no, that's not what the rain God, the grain God. That's not what that's the Hebrew saying. There is one God who's responsible for all of this. All of this, exactly. Yeah. Whereas the fallen realm wanted uh, everyone to believe that we've got individual deities. Mm-hmm. There's one controller up here, but the whole pantheon. Right. That they're, they're all aspects of what our Lord God Almighty, the Creator, does for us. Mm-hmm. And the fake news version is what you get from the fallen realm. Right. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. This says they shall cry aloud. Yea, they shall sing Mm -hmm. hymns. Yeah, I was going to rabbit trail there, but I'm I'm not going to. (laughs) What? 
66 is it what ne- is next? Mm-hmm. Yep. To the choir master. I can't remember if we take a break in this. We don't, do we? Um, no, we okay. do not. There are some things we do where we do take a break, but not in this one. What, what can I say? My brain took a break. To the choir master. <laughs> a song, a psalm. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Mm-hmm. And this is not a name, as in how we think of my name is Sharon. Right. This is not a reputation. This is actually an aspect of the triune deity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sadly, this is what, well, not sadly, but not all Bible teachers will will get that because the the concept of the name is is difficult for us with a Western worldview. Yeah. Uh, especially 21st century, we think of it. The Net Bible translates, sing praises about the majesty of his reputation. No, no I'm sorry, that's name, not what that's it means. That's not what the name means. The name is an aspect of God personified. Hashem. Mm-hmm. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. The word awesome, we've way overused. Um, oh, inspiring. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. I do love that. Mm -hmm. All the earth worships you. Well, that doesn't happen now. But the day is coming when that will happen. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely for the end. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Selah. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome, awe-inspiring in his deeds toward the children of man. He served, he turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. This is recounting his miracles. Mm-hmm. And again, the bicolon here of Yam and Nahar, which was the uh, representation, the Canaanite deity of chaos. Prince Yam, Judge Nahar, mm-hmm. two the aspects bicolon. of the same... Yeah, it's like a par- it's parallel colons. verses. It's got two colons, <laughs> as opposed to a semicolon, which only has half a one. Exactly, and nobody wants that. Yeah. He turned the sea into dry land, and there's a semicolon right after that. They passed through the river on <laughs> foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. In other words, he sees you. Mm-hmm. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that part. Lord, get me out of this, and and I promise I will. (laughs) Verse 15, I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Selah. Now, are we supposed to be doing these things today? No. No. The Lord made a sacrifice that is once and for all. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's another psalm today that talks about how he prefers our thanksgiving, our praise. Um, Verse 16, come and hear all you who... Fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. That is a underline that part. Yeah. Only only one verse in the Septuagint here is slightly different in its tone than 
in the uh, the the English based on the Masoretic text. That's verse three. Mm-hmm. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. In the in the um, Septuagint, in the magnitude of your power, your enemies feigned loyalty to you. Ah, yeah. We're too afraid to openly rebel. We're just going to pretend to be loyal. Yep. Yeah. Psalm 67, to the choir master, or for the end. Yes, it does say for the end yeah. here. With stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. This says a psalm, a of, psalm David. of David. Yeah. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, Selah. Now, that's part of the priestly bless- it uh, is. blessing. Mm-hmm. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Thy but, salvation among all pa- nations. Is the word there Yeshua? Mm, yes, it is, actually. It. Yes, Yeshua, your Yeshua, or, yeah, your y- Yeshua among all nations. Does it say that they may know Derek? <laughs> Thy way? Uh, yes, it does, actually. <laughs> In the, Yeah, your, make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your Yeshua, your saving power among all nations. Well, that day is coming. How about that? That day is coming when the priestly blessing will be said over all the earth. Mm -hmm. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity, with fairness, with justice, and guide the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. And now we go to... 69. If I can find where I do this. There. <laughs> wonder why in the Greek, or well, why the um, Septuagint translated for the end and it was consistently because this Mm -hmm. is another psalm that in english it says to the choir master yeah maybe they just didn't understand what it meant and they said well it can't mean this yeah i don't know but but there was a concept of prophecy so i I, yeah i don't know i really don't want to we should probably ask doug woodward about that the author of rebooting the bible where he shows how things were tweaked a bit in the Masoretic text. Doctrinally speaking, there's nothing that's been changed in our English language Bibles. Don't don't for a minute think that if you if you're just depending on your ESV or KJV or NIV or whatever, that no. somehow you've got a flawed Old Testament. Not at all. It's, Not at all. Remember, it's divinely inspired in the original languages, mm-hmm. and so for the most part, we have the vast majority. We're talking high ninety percentile. Oh, yeah. Of the original language Mm -hmm. in the Masoretic text. It's just that there were a few things added and a few things changed. It doesn't change our perception of salvation. It doesn't change Mm -hmm. the history. It doesn't change the the message. It's just a few tweaks that are so interesting to take note of. Right. And they all seem to relate to... The second power in heaven. The second power in heaven. Mm -hmm. De-supernaturalizing heaven so that they can say, you know, our God is one and this Yeshua... Ben Yusef right. of Nazareth, who is not the, these annoying Christians are claiming was the Messiah, right. is, is wrong. And some of that had to do with the timing, though, which is why the ages of the patriarchs are different in the Septuagint than they are in our Bibles, mm. which was to take away the argument of um, the early church and uh, even the uh, the Essenes who were looking at the coming of Messiah in the first century B.C., I think we mentioned before, maybe we talked about an un- unravel- ra- unraveling revelation, but um, the Essene community, based on their understanding of the prophecy of Daniel and the 70 weeks prophecy, which they commenced the timeline with the destruction of the temple by Nebuchadnezzar in 586, they were expecting Messiah in the first century BC, and they thought that Herod the Great might be him. Hmm. But... Um, so anyway, it it I'm speculating here. I don't know this. I don't have any scholarly basis you need for this. Doug, back on. Yeah, yeah. Um, just why would they take out the phrase "for the end" in all of these psalms unless they were trying to 
tamp down this idea that, hey, maybe the end is already here. Well, that's entirely possible. Just a speculation on my part. Well, and that's all we can do sometimes. Okay, so Psalm 69. Uh, in the ESV, to the choir master, according to Lilies, must have been the name of one of the tunes, mm-hmm. of David, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. This, uh, I think this is the one that has some messianic language in it. Um, the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with my crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. More in number than the hairs of my head are those who hate me without cause. Mighty are those who would destroy me, those who attack me with lies. What I did not steal, must I now restore? Hmm. Now, think of the Lord's prayer that night when the disciples were sleeping and he was entreating God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Mm. He restored that which he did not steal. That's true. Oh, God, you are my folly. Now, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, th- remember, there, there are times in these words messi- messianic, but not 100%. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the Lord said to his father, you're my folly. <laughs> but the wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. He did no wrong, none whatsoever. So in that verse, that has to be David speaking. Sure. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me. O Lord Yahweh of hosts, let not those who seek you be brought to to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. For it is you, it is for your sake that I have borne reproach that dishonor has covered my face. This is messianic. Mm -hmm. I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's sons. Messianic. Mm -hmm. For zeal for your house has consumed me, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and humbled my soul with fasting, it became my reproach. When I made sackcloth my co- my clothing, I became a byword to them. I am the talk of those who sit in the gate, and the drunkards make songs about me. Hmm. This, you know, picture the Lord going through this sort of rejection. Mm-hmm. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Yahweh, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me in your saving faithfulness. Deliver me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up mm-hmm. or the pit close its mouth over me. This is death in its final form. That is not what happened to our Lord. True, right. Answer me, O Yahweh, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. What did he say on the cross? My God, my God, why Mm -hmm. have you forsaken me? Right. Verse 8. Draw near to my soul, redeem me, sorry, 18. Draw near to my soul, redeem me, ransom me because of my enemies. The Lord didn't need ransoming. So that's Davidic. Mm -hmm. You know my my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Reproaches have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity and there was none and for comforters but I found none. They gave me poison for food, Uh, and for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. Just as, yeah, that was fulfilled on the cross with the sponge with vinegar. Exactly. Mm. Let their own table before them become a snare, and when they are at peace, let it become 
a trap. I want to stop here for a second because these lines come from someone who is feeling completely let down, Mm -hmm. scorned to the point of you, you feel like you're drowning in mire. The Lord on the cross said, forgive them. That's the opposite of what we see here. Yes, yes. But we do know that even our, though our Lord said, forgive them, for they know not what they do, the day's coming when all of that's gone. It's only judgment. Mm-hmm. And so you get an idea of, as David yearns for justification and, and for, for um, someone to come in and pay back the enemy for the things they've done to David, the Lord is going to, he's going to have recompense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There will be a debt that is paid. Verse 21 again, they gave me poison for food and for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. Let their own table before them become a snare and when they are at peace, let it become a trap. The alternate there is a retribution and trap. Let their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and make their loins tremble continually. Hmm. That That's an interesting, you're trembling in your loins. Mm-hmm. That is so afraid that you're just you're about going to, in your pants. What, yeah. Pour out your indignation upon them and let your burning anger overtake them. May their camp be a desolation. Let no one dwell in their tents. Hmm. For they persecute Excuse me, for they persecute him whom you have struck down, and they recount the pain of those you have wounded. Add to them punishment upon punishment. May they have no acquittal from you. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. This is judgment. Yeah. Let them not be enrolled among the righteous. Interesting. We, we sort of take verses like this for granted. It's taken out of context sometimes. Well, the idea that my name is written down in pencil <laughs> and it's mine. It can yeah. be erased. Yeah, yeah, it can be erased. But that, that wasn't the Jewish thought. It no. was every fall that your name could be blotted out if you didn't go through all of these, you know, the, the perfect rituals. Mm-hmm. But the idea that there are books in the spirit realm where these yes. things are, yeah, as um, Timothy Alberino mm-hmm. uh, in his book, um, Birthright, we discussed Great with him book. and had not really considered the implications of this, but this uh, suggests that, uh, hey, if you've got writing and books in the spirit realm, that sort of suggests that uh, the angelic realm has got a culture, a civilization, an organization, a hierarchy. Libraries. Libraries. So, Planning offices. If there are books that keep track of all of these things. Um, yeah, that, that suggests yes. that there's a lot more going on in the spirit realm than we, uh, than, than we normally think about. That is so but, true. Uh, and it gets into the idea of, this is, okay, first bunny trail of the day. Hmm. Maybe the last because we're running out of time. But uh, um, Nabu mm-hmm. was the god of writing. Yeah. And there is a, a tradition, and this is why I have a character named Ratziel in the Red Wing Saga. There is a Jewish Kabbalistic uh, tradition of Sefer Ratziel, the book of Ratziel, right. which he may have, he wrote down the words that he heard God speak. Now bear in mind, he didn't hear everything the Lord spoke. Right. He wrote down what he heard. Mm-hmm. Um, so that book was either given to Adam or to Noah or to one of Noah's kids, mm-hmm. or possibly to Cain. So it was given to somebody. Yeah. In, That's the in belief. Kabbalistic belief. Exactly. Yeah. And it's sort of like the Emerald Tablets. It's this idea that the words that you, the magic spells, mm-hmm. are in this book. Right. Which is, the, you know, the sort of the idea of, okay, it was torn apart because you can't destroy God's word. It's what I say in the Red Wing Saga. Mm-hmm. I, that is not what we see in Scripture. I'm just saying that. That's how I wrote it. Makes makes for a good plot device. It does. It yeah. really does. And and I think and there are those who I do think believe that there yes, and I think we have the idea of recording angels. Mm-hmm. So what if one of the recording angels did fall? Yeah. We don't have a direct evidence of that, just sort of a 
a, a an ancillary idea within mm-hmm. certain Jewish sects. So, yeah. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Let them not be enrolled among the righteous. Verse 29. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God. Yeshua. Set your, me on high. Let your Yeshua. Sing. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please Yahweh more than an ox or mm-hmm. a bull with horns and hoofs. It's not the ritual. It's what's in your heart. Exactly. Matters. When the humble see it, they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For Yahweh hears the needy and does not despise his own people who are prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion and build up the cities of Judah, and people shall dwell there and possess it. The offspring of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall dwell in it. Underline, the offspring of his servants shall inherit it. This is not going to be inherited by the Rephaim. Oh, true. This earth belongs to the children of Adam. Right. It belongs to those who have been saved Mm -hmm. by the salvation, by the sacrifice of our Lord, by his triumph. Mm Mm-hmm. We are, we are saved, and, and this therefore, we get our inheritance back. Yes, which, which is, is the what? whole point of all of this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was the, that, that's actually a uh, discussion that is featured in tonight's View from the Bunker. Oh. The Iron and Myth discussion with um, Judd Burton, Brian Godawa, Doug Van Dorn. We talk about the... Um, New Testament terms for supernatural beings, like mm-hmm. principalities, powers, um, thrones, archons. dominions, archons. And we started out, though, with um, because there was one term from the Old Testament that I wanted to get to last month. We didn't get to it, and that was the term translated as saints or holy ones. Kedeshim. Kedeshim. In Daniel, that uh, word applies to the watchers. Mm-hmm. It was used of the watchers in Daniel chapter 4. Yes, the holy watchers. Right. So... In Daniel 7, when we see that the little horn wages war on the saints, well, I'm I'm rabbit trailing. Oh, second bunny trail of the day. Second bunny trail of the day. But let let me cut that off because you you can hear that in detail tonight on uh, View from the Bunker. But the point was this, that in the New Testament, just as we see what uh, language of inheritance or sonship language, you know, we will become sons of God. Right. If we attain to the resurrection, Jesus said, we will be like the angels in heaven, neither marrying nor giving in marriage, blah, blah, blah. The ones in heaven. Right, yes. Um, And that's a verse that's taken out of context to proof text why Genesis 6 can't mean what it says. You have to mean in heaven. Right. But the whole point of the verse was, if we attain to the resurrection, we will be like the angels in heaven. That was really the point of that, Mm -hmm. what Jesus was telling the uh, Sadducees. No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah, they were Sadducees. Because they didn't believe in resurrection. Exactly. But the the point was that the word saints in the Old Testament, in the context of Daniel 7, appears to refer to supernatural beings, whereas in Revelation, the parallel where the Antichrist wages war against the saints appears to refer to humans. And we can see elsewhere in the New Testament where Paul especially will use the same terms to refer to both humans and heavenly beings. Mm -hmm. And the point of all of this is that because, as Jesus said, if we attain to the resurrection, we become like like the angels in heaven. So that's the reason for all of that in the New Testament and why we are called sons and daughters of God in the New Testament, which in the Old Testament is a term that only refers to supernatural beings. We will become like them after the resurrection. What an honor. What a privilege. So one more psalm and uh, we will have, boy, gotten through all of our allotment. Number 70. Psalm 70. That that, that, that all important number. Another. Yes. This is another. You want to hear another bunny trail before we get this? Sure. This one is really a bunny trail. I mean, we're talking a hop, hop, hopper. This one has to do with the Bilderbergs. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, I know. There's nothing in this psalm except for the number of it. That and was that almost is... a spit take. <laughs> I'm glad you controlled yourself because yeah. the mic couldn't have taken it. Mm-hmm. Um, psalm 70. 70 is the number of completion. It mm-hmm. is a very important biblical concept, that number 70. Well, this year was the 69th meeting of the Bilderbergs. Oh. Next year will be the 70th. Hmm, interesting. So watch and see. Also, yeah. it's an election year. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it interesting that Stacey Abrams of Georgia was invited? I'm watching this year. for her to announce. Yeah. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Mm. Boy, you know what? I hate to say this, but I think if she got the Democratic nomination, I think she'd have a better chance of becoming president than she did of becoming governor. Oh, of I agree with you. I do. It's wow. not because I, you know, it's just. Just she, looking at the de- the way the she has the ability college. to pull in a larger, more from the middle. Mm-hmm. Even though she leans left, she has that ability to reach out. She has a way of talking to people mm-hmm. that makes her seem like, oh yeah, well yeah, I can see that more more reasonable than her policies are. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Which is which is what the you trick do of being a, a successful politician. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear, and then later on, I'm going to do what I really want to do, mm, or what my masters want me to do. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 70, to the choir master of David, or uh, for the end, by Mm -hmm. David. Yes, for remembrance is what it says Mm -hmm. here, for the end. Yep, for the memorial offering. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Oh, hold on. This says, for the end, by David, for remembrance, for the Lord, that the Lord may save me. Mm -hmm. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Yahweh, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, aha, aha. (laughs) Or in the alternate translation, yeah, ah, (laughs) ah. Snidely whiplash. (laughs) Verse four. Suddenly I picture the the knights who say, (laughs) I don't know why that is. (laughs) May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation, love your, just double checking, mm-hmm. love your Yeshua, yep, mm-hmm. say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You, my, you are my help and my deliverer. O Yahweh, do not delay. Even so come. Mm. Well, again, this was David in the midst of uh, a number of um, battles against foes that must have appeared pretty strong this was really the um the the kingdom of israel reaching out beyond its original borders allotted to the tribes and exercising dominion over a good chunk of uh, syria now in, in genesis 15 god had promised abraham territory all the way to the euphrates and that doesn't mean all the way across Iraq to the Euphrates there necessarily. It could mean the Euphrates, which runs through. Uh, it's, it, it's a long river. In Syria. Yeah, there's a big it's chunk a of it that runs river. through Syria. So, you know, it could have been north. And this, there are some who suggest that uh, with these conquests over Zobah and Aram Damascus, that uh, David and Solomon actually fulfilled the land promised to Abraham. Well, I don't know that I agree with that, but there are some who who, who will say, well, yeah. if, you, if you take it to mean this, then the peak of the kingdom of Israel under Solomon, when he did extend dominion, really, or control over everything as far north as the Euphrates, where it crosses into, um, crosses into Turkey, you could say that, yeah, that promise was fulfilled then. Hmm. I still think it, it I remains think to future. be fulfilled. I, I, I think it's too. future. But, uh, Speaking of uh, slight bunny turn uh speaking of syria and turkey Mm. they're starting to have peace talks that's a big deal well syria has gotten back into the arab league Mm -hmm. now erdogan who is in his runoff election to be re-elected president is starting to make noises through back channels that he might be willing to talk to assad huh that's a big deal that's a very big deal because for 12 years the the arab league had backed efforts to throw Assad out of power. Most mm-hmm. of the um, most of the nations in the Arab League are Sunni. Right. The the major Shia powers are um 
Iran? Well, Iran and uh, Iraq is uh, majority Shia. Mm. Even though it used to be run by, um, gosh, it was Saddam not Hussein. Sunni. Yeah, and he wasn't and he's, Sunni. He's Sunni. He was, yeah, but he was a special branch of it, I think. Mm, no, I don't think so. Not, mm. not like... Not, Maybe like, I'm thinking of the party that he led. The Ba'ath party? Yeah, the Ba'ath party. Mm. Yeah, Syria is uh, headed up by an Alawite, which is an offshoot of Shia Islam, which is mm. why Iran is backing him and why the so-called uh, moderate rebels in Syria were Sunni, mm. violent Sunni um, sects Yes, that um, scholars who study what they call uh, Mahdism, mm. which is uh, the Sunni belief is that any rightly guided one, which is what Mahdi means, who gathers enough soldiers behind him can become the Mahdi. Mm-hmm. 19th century, there was a claim that in Sudan that right. the Mahdist is called the Mahdist uprising. Right. uprising. There have been a number of Mahdis, just as in Jewish history, there are a number of uh, would-be messiahs who rose up. And there are some that are calling themselves mm-hmm. Mahdi now. Right. So that's that's a fundamental difference between the Sunnis and the Shias. The Shias do not believe that they can escalate, they, that they can accelerate the, mm-hmm. the pace before the Mahdi arrives. They're not even supposed, Shias aren't even supposed to try to exercise dominion. They're not supposed to try to conquer the world until the Mahdi arrives. Sunnis believe, yeah, let's go for it. But we're seeing an awful lot of peacemaking throughout that whole region. Really and strange. it is so strange. I mean, is yeah, prophetically within the, significant. Within the it really space is. of six months, yeah. we've seen major shifts. Mm-hmm. So nations like Saudi Arabia and um, the UAE that were all on board and funneling money and weapons through back channels to rebels in Syria, that that's all over. S- S- Assad was welcomed back mm-hmm. into the fold like a long-lost son. And it's really kind of weird, and especially weird because a year ago, well, say three years ago, when the Trump administration was getting Mohammed bin Salman to sit down kind of behind the scenes with Israel when the UAE and Bahrain were saying, okay, yeah, we'll normalize relations with Israel, the Abraham Accords. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly Saudi Arabia is in the camp with Russia and China. They're making nice with Iran, exchanging embassies for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. Syria is now back in the Arab League. It's like, man, I mean, you can't lay this all on Joe Biden, if we take Paul at his word that we're not wrestling against human opponents, right? Principalities and powers behind the scenes are moving pieces on the board very quickly, very quickly, and um, yeah, we're we're living in very interesting times, aren't we? Though, yeah. and well, even so, come Lord Jesus, Amen. I want to remind you that uh, thanks again for downloading the app, and thank you to those who have been helping us out with the Build a Barn Better project. Um, if we have time today, Derek and I plan on going out and doing mm-hmm. some more uh, filming out in the barn because. You've nearly got it ready to go on the trucks for donation. Right. Moved everything. <laughs> this side of the barn <laughs> goes to somebody who can use the stuff. The other side goes to the junkyard. Yeah, probably. Yeah. A lot of the junkyard stuff. Uh, but uh, many, nope. many, many things out there, dishes and, and housewares and furniture, a lot of stuff will be going to, we think probably to a local church that has a specific area in their ministry where they just, if you've had your house burned down or mm-hmm. lost flood in a flood, whatever, mm-hmm. if you need help with furniture, then they'll get you started. Yeah. And they need donations. Need so to talk with them about that and see if that's something that we can uh, make happen. We, um, we don't want we, the things to just be junked because they're in good shape. Right, right. And uh, we want someone to make use of them. Some of these things may be... Uh, well, yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff that's usable in there. It's just we don't need them. We don't have room for them. Right. My mother doesn't need them anymore. No, not so, at all. So uh, once that's done, then we'll get everything cleared out of there with the the, the mower that you discovered while you were working there. Oh, my goodness. It's now been picked up by its owner. We're, we're really glad for that. Thanks, Sandy. Um, and, and we found a new home for our mowers. So we don't have those in there anymore. Because the yard they, tractor, yes. It, yeah. is now, it found a home. Somebody can use it. It was just sitting yeah. there unused. Yeah. Even if <laughs> even if we didn't have Jack coming out here to mow for us a couple of times a week <clears throat> uh, during the peak seasons, um, 
we would still need to get a different mower because that one's just yeah. not up to this rocky terrain. It was terrain. a suburban yard tractor type mower. Poor thing. And boy, on these two acres of rocks, thin layer of soil on rocks, it was just, just getting beat like, up. Have, you, you know what it's like when you're on a plane and you hit turbulence? Rough turbulence. Rough turbulence. Yeah. That's what it's like to ride the lawn tractor mm-hmm. we just gave away because you're constantly going over lots of rocks the, with the, grass on top of it. I couldn't believe it, but the, the nuts that they used to secure the seat, and you can you know mm-hmm. loosen them so you can adjust the seat forward right. and back based on your height. They 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 broke because they were, of the bouncing. They had to replace those with. We had to take them back to the shop, and the mm-hmm. shop had to replace those with steel nuts and bolts. Why right. they used plastic on that, I don't know. Well, I guess I they know. figured it was you know oh, just suburban, cost savings. Yeah, yeah. suburban well, lawn. No so anyway, yes, anyway, that all that's uh, been it's out of there. So we'll show you that. Uh, so very soon, ahead. we're hoping sometime in June we're going to get the actual uh, refurbishment started with cleaning the floors, putting in the insulation. Mm-hmm. Getting the HVAC system, updating, upgrading the electrics, all of those things. So we are really excited and yep. we can only do this because you guys have made it possible. Thank yes. you very, very much. We are grateful and uh, we do appreciate and depend on your support. You can find a link at uh, gilberthouse.org for that. You can also find a calendar in the top menu bar where it says calendar. Go to uh, upcoming events. We've got hey, uh, also on the right hand sidebar and we're just a couple of weeks away from visiting our friends at His Call Ministries, Alec and Ginny Wade. That's in Sparta, Missouri, or just outside Sparta, which is between Springfield and Branson. The so Finley if you're in the Ozarks, River Ranch. Yes. I love the name of that place. It's we, a beautiful place, too. It is. And this will be kind of a small gathering, so uh, don't wait if you think you're interested. It's just Sharon and me talking Friday evening, Saturday during the day, and then Sunday morning we'll be talking about our expedition to Israel and the Valley, and, uh, the valley of the Shadow of Death. So talking about a couple of psalms 22 and 23 Mm -hmm. i imagine um maybe 68 if we have time i think 68 should be in there too but also showing you some video and um uh, of the tour itself or or our expedition i should say this is the pre-tour uh adventure that we had with uh, doug and janelle van dorn and uh, aaron lipkin and uh, the wonderful israel tour guide yashai avatal taking us around will show you where we went and why we went to those places and why we believe the valley of the shadow of death is a real place it's um again june 9 10 and 11 and you can find out more at uh, hiscallministries.com that's where you go to find out more and reserve your spot hiscallministries.com and hey end of july go yes. there for a conference in ohio mm-hmm. in brookville Yes, Ohio. not Brookline, of which Forget there is that. none. It's Brookville, yes, that's northwest right out. side of, Aiden, of Dayton. It's it's a really beautiful location, and I'll tell you what, this is an all-star. Dr. Greg, Greg Reed, Coach Dave, Casper McLeod, Tom Dunn, Kenny C., mm-hmm. David Paxton, who is amazing, uh, Nathan Branham. I've not met him yet. I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, Vicki Joy Anderson, whom yes. we love dearly. Randy mm-hmm. Conway, a poet after your own heart, after God's own heart. Dr. Mike Spaulding, of course, will be there. L.A. Marzuli. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Michael Lake, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, David Hevner, and of course, we'll be there too. Yep. And uh, just Friday and Saturday. That's going to be an amazing thing. So, yeah, hang out with everybody there. That will be, uh, there, there will be some fellowship and some ministry taking place much there. ministry yeah. half of these people are are this is what they do they mm-hmm. minister to people who are dealing with spiritual warfare so you want the experts they're going to be there yeah go there for conference.com to get your uh, get your registration in and uh, this will probably sell out the uh, harvest revival center can seat probably five six hundred it's uh, going to be a good sized gathering yeah and uh, we hope that you are a part of it we do indeed uh boy i think we're about out of time wait a minute yes. you said vftb is going to be view the... from the bunker tonight mm-hmm. iron and myth the crew is back doug van dorn judd burton brian Gadala, as we talk about the unseen realm in the new testament how is judd doing he's been asking for prayer i know he went back into the hospital sent him a note this morning let me see if uh, in real time we can get an update here to find out uh, what is what his status is he was uh, yeah had a bit of a gastrointestinal thing bad reaction to some food he ate yeah said um uh throat still a bit sore because he had an ng yeah. tube mm-hmm. and voice raspy uh let me see how i feel this afternoon we'll let you know 
Oh, so, uh, so he may or may not be on, but be, well, please, well, please the, keep him in prayer. The, but tonight's program is pre-recorded. Oh, oh, okay. So oh, yeah, we're supposed wonderful. to talk tonight for next month's program. Yep. Oh, okay. See, that's the confusion with me because you told me yesterday that you were going to be talking to them tonight. So yeah, okay, yeah. No, so the program that's on tonight, we've al- that's already done and in the books. And uh, but the one that you record live tonight, yes. is still a secret. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. That that one will be on sacred geography, actually. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so that'll be for next month's program. But whether we record it tonight or not may depend on how Judd's feeling. So we may push that off a week. But uh, tonight's program, yeah, really interesting stuff on um, the terms used of divine beings in the the New Testament. Especially, we we get into some speculation: who or what are the glorious ones ooh, ooh. mentioned by Peter and Jude, who said that there were some rebellious folks who had blasphemed the glorious ones and said that, look, not even the archangel Michael dared bl- bring a blasphemous accusation against Satan. And yet these people are following their dreams and blaspheming the glorious what? ones. Who are the glorious Ooh, ones? Good question. And well, I love the fact that the Bible isn't cut and dried there. there you do not have a 100 percent understanding. Not mm-hmm. one of us does. Yeah. Not one of us. The only one who totally understands it is the Lord God Almighty himself. Even the angels in heaven, Mm -hmm. I would say, do not understand everything that's in there. Absolutely. The ones who rebelled thought perhaps they understood his limits, but uh, found out, wait a minute, there are none. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Did you know Vicki Joy Anderson has her own version of Milton? Yes, she wrote it. um, I need to find out if she's got it published. She does. Oh, we got to find copies she of that. She gave us a copy. Oh, I've got to find my copy then and read that. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't even know what's in this house, I much think, less what's in the barn. I think it's underneath that table over there. I oh, think. no wonder, because you always sit in that chair. I don't know what's on that table. <laughs> <laughs> I see that evil laugh. Uh, your uh, hair's still cute, though. Prayer. Father, thank you for bringing us together over your word. And uh, Lord, we just are grateful for the joy that we can feel in the midst of the rising darkness around us. Help us, Lord, to take that seriously, not to ignore it, but also not to be dismayed, knowing that uh, just as in the Psalms we read today, that while we can grieve over those who are being led astray, who are blind because they willingly refuse to see, that yet, Father, your love, your love for us, For those who repent and turn to you, your forgiveness is beyond our comprehension. So help us to plant seeds, Lord, with those who do not yet know you, that your spirit will bring to fruition. And we pray for those who are struggling, Father, those who are in need financially, physically, spiritually, Lord. We pray for your blessing. We ask you to grant us wisdom, Father, that uh, as we go forth, we could make sense of the world around us in light of your word and the strength, Father, to speak those words that you give us when the opportunities present themselves. We pray for your blessing for all those, especially those ministering in foreign lands. We pray for those bringing the gospel to places where the darkness holds sway. We ask for your blessing on us this day, Father, and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Until next time, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Mrs. Derek Gilbert. (laughs) Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We post a new Bible study each Sunday morning. Subscribe to the podcast and explore the archives online at gilberthouse.org.